the end of this video, you will have a crystal clear understanding of what MCB is, why it's required, how it internally works, how to effectively use it in Anyton to build complex workflows, and why is everyone so excited about it. You will be amazed to see how useless it is in certain cases and so powerful in others. This video contains everything you need to know about MCP in Anyton. Let's get started. First, let's understand what MCP is. Let's say we have this AI agent that handles all the appointment scheduling. We have given it access to the OpenAI chat model, which will act as its brain. Then it has access to a simple memory where it can store its previous conversations. And then we have given these five calendar tools, create event, delete event, get event, update event, and list events. Depending on what action this AI agent needs to perform, it can trigger the required corresponding tool and get the work done. And this works just fine. Now just imagine if there were a large number of tools, not just five, then that would become really difficult to manage over here. And if you look at each of these nodes, internally they are just making an API call. So here we give the credential that it will use to make the API call. Then we select the resource type and the operation. Now just imagine if the service provider, in this case Google, if it makes any updates to their existing APIs in the newer version, let's say they add some more parameters or if they deprecate an existing API or they, or they introduce a new API. Then in order to keep these workflows running fine, we will need to update these nodes. We'll have to come over here, select the correct operation or fill in the correct value for the newly introduced parameter or update it. And that's a manual and kind of non-productive exercise. Now, what if there were a better way of doing it? where a agent had access to some server that would dynamically on the fly return all the available tools along with what parameters they need and all the corresponding prompts etc and that's exactly what mcp does mcp is model context protocol it follows a client server architecture where a host application can connect to multiple servers it has three main components mcp host mcp host can be any program like cloud desktop or any IDEs like cursor or maybe your custom application that want to access data through MCP. Second component is MCP client. These are protocol clients that maintain one-to-one -one connection with the servers. And the third component is MCP server itself. It is a lightweight program that exposes specific tools through a standardized model context protocol. So in case of Anyton, its Docker container will act as the host. Now client can call the server and it can get the list of all the available tools which are registered on that server and server can respond back with a manifest file back to the client. Then client can forward that manifest file to the AI agent and AI agent will share it with the LLM model. Then LLM model will decide which function to execute based on the current query being processed. And once it's decided, then AI agent will ask this client to execute that particular action and client will make a request to the server server will execute this function and return back the response. And that's how the complete flow looks like. So this is the code for Google Calendar MCP. And if we scroll down in list tools.ts, we will find the list of all the tools defined in this MCP. To begin with, client will make a request to this MCP server to list all the tools. LLM will then decide which tool needs to be executed. MCP server will receive that request and will execute the logic defined in calltools.ts for this particular tool. Now don't get overwhelmed by looking at this code because you don't have to deal with any of this stuff. Everything is being taken care of by the native node in Anyton. This is just for you to understand how it internally works. And we don't have to own this server code. This is managed by the respective services or by open communities. By the way, if you want to build your own MCP, you can do that pretty easily by following this guide over here. You can find the link in the description. Now let's come back to Anyton and see how to transform this workflow by using MCP. So Anyton provides two nodes. One is MCP client tool and another is MCP server trigger. MCP server trigger is where we need to define all the tools that we want to be available for this AI agent. So what we need to do is disconnect all of these tools from here and move them below this MCP server and connect all of these tools. Now all of these tools are provided through this MCP server. Now we need a way 
to allow this AI agent to talk to this MCP server. And that's where this MCP client comes into the picture. And we just need to connect this one tool with this MCP client node. Now, if we open this MCP server trigger, it has this URL over here. So we can copy the production URL and then we need to go back to MCP client and we need to paste that endpoint over here in the SSE endpoint field. Now, if I save this workflow and if I refresh this and open this MCP client, we will see all of these tools in this list, which we added to this MCP server. It means that client is able to pull in all the tools from MCP server. Now in MCP client, we have this way of limiting the access to the tools. So we have three options, all selected and all accept. So all will select all the tools which are added to the MCP server. With selected field, we can select a couple of tools that we want give access to. And all accept field will let us exclude a couple of tools. For the sake of explanation, I'm keeping both MCP server and client in the same workflow. But we should move this MCP server to a new workflow and then use it over here. Let's move these side by side so that we can trigger the chat and see all of these nodes in action. Let's give it a prompt. I want to schedule a meeting at 11 a.m. for one hour. Keep the title as project discussion. Now AI agent is working on it. It called the MCP client and, and it was able to successfully schedule the meeting. As you can see, it first called the memory, then it called the chat model, then it called MCP client to execute the operation. And then it again called the open AI chat model to prepare the final message. And then it saved the message in the memory. If we go to the executions, we can see that this MCP server was triggered and the create event tool was executed. And these parameters were passed by the MCP client, start end, description and summary. Now, as you can see, using MCP can seem useless at times, especially if you are not looking for reusing your tools across workflows. For example, here, all we did was to move all of these tools from under the AI agent to this MCP server. And that's it. And that introduced one more layer of communication. Earlier, AI agent was able to directly call these tools, but now it has to go through this layer of MCP server to be able to execute them. The latency will be in milliseconds, but this additional layer will introduce some more latency. Now, there is no point of using MCP over here if I don't intend to use these tools in other workflows. And that's where it becomes kind of useless. In fact, it could have been useful if instead of configuring each of these tools manually, there could have been a mechanism that would automatically fetch all the available tools from Google and make them available to this AI agent. And I think that will happen in the near future, but it's not there right now. So when should we use MCP? So the first scenario is where we are looking for reusing tools across workflows. Let's say we have 10, 15, 20 workflows, which are kind of using the same tools. Then instead of providing these tools in each of those workflows, it's better to pull them out and put them under the MCP server. The reason being that let's say tomorrow, if Google makes some changes to their APIs and that leads to some changes to these nodes, maybe introduction of new parameters or updating the existing ones. In that case, you will need to go to each of your workflows and update the nodes. But if you're using MCP server, then you don't have to make any change to any of your workflows. And all you need to do is make one change in your MCP server workflow. That's it. The second use case would be that if you want to build your MCP server on any 10, and if you want to connect it to different tools like Claude or Cursor or maybe your custom application, then you can consider using it. Now let's talk about what's a good way to structure MCP servers and the corresponding tools. Let's say you want to give tools related to email, Google Calendar and Slack to this AI agent. Now there are two ways of doing it. Approach one, you can add tools from multiple services in the same MCP server. And then in the MCP client, you can select the tools that you want to give this agent access to. And you can use the same MCP server across your various workflows. The second approach is to create three different MCP servers, one for calendar, one for Gmail and another for Slack, and then create three different MCP clients and connect them to the AI agent. In each of these MCP clients, you need to give the corresponding SSE URL and behind the scenes, what will happen is the manifest file from all the three MCP servers will be combined and passed on to the AI agent. But I don't suggest giving a large number of responsibilities to the same agent. Instead, you should create multiple AI agents 
with their dedicated responsibilities and you can have one master AI agent that delegates the corresponding tasks to those AI agents. A single agent having access to so many tools will lead to hallucination. Let me know in the comments what do you think about MCP or if you have any questions. Don't forget to subscribe the channel for more in-depth tutorials on AI and MCP. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.